Uh oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> We're filming, okay. Um. <laughs> hey guys, it's Lauren. Right off the bat, this is my editing Instagram and you should go follow it if you don't already. So today's video is one that we've been wanting to do for a very long time. Today I'm gonna teach my friend Allie how to use After Effects so you can introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Allie. I've been Lauren's friend for a pretty long time now and I'm like her number one supporter yes. of all of her editing. I think she's amazing and very talented. What is like your editing history? Like what do you know about the type of editing that like I do. I've heard the words like plugins, yes, and <laughs> transitions, good. but I don't know what they are or how to do them. So we're gonna begin. We have After Effects open. We definitely did not already have it open, and then my camera memory card was full. That didn't so. happen. So this is your composition. <laughs> this is your timeline. This is where all your clips are. And then if you take that little blue line and drag it throughout your timeline, you'll see the different photos. <laughs> She's so pretty. Exactly. And then here's your media. So your photos, videos, and compositions. Right here? Yes, right there. So the first thing you mentioned knowing is transition. So how about we try executing a transition? Okay. Oh wait, you have, wait, you have eyelashes right here. <laughs> what transition do you want to do? I think I just start simple. I really like when you do like a shake. Is that a <laughs> transition? <laughs> I mean it is, but I feel like that's a little bit. Oh, it's not Okay, how about, how about I give you like a range? You could do a zoom in, zoom out, screen pump, rotation clockwise, counterclockwise, slide left, slide right, slide up, slide down. Yes. Let's do a zoom in. Zoom in, okay, all right. So we're gonna start with the first two clips. Now you may notice like they look like very short clips, right? Like everything is very, so you drag that and it expands the timeline. So you, okay, Whoa, that's a little, that's that's a little big. bit. Yes, okay, I think that's the perfect length. When we do our transitions, we want it to look very smooth, very polished, right? So we add this thing called motion blur. So do you have any idea where like that might be? Maybe over here when I find it. So you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this little button right here, here you can click that. It looks like pancakes, just remember the pancakes. That's motion blur. So you may think, oh my God, it's on, like I'm good, but you're not. Because you have to apply it to all of your clip. Where, where else do you see the little pancake? Um, right here. Exactly. Yes, I did it. Okay, so click on your first clip and you see that little carrot right there next to the Little carrot, click there. You see transform, right? And does that maybe you maybe be thinking, oh my god, the transforms are there? No. Oh, okay. All right. It can't be that easy. <laughs> maybe you should check it out. Wait, no, no, the carrot next to trans. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, which one do you think we're gonna use for a zoom in? Scale? Yes! Maybe I'm a professional. You're literally a professional. Transitions are made with things called keyframes. So you add a keyframe and you make it some value, and then you add another keyframe and you make it a different value, right? Right now, my scale value is at 100, right? So let me just show you what would happen if I brought it to 200. It's closer now, right? So the whole concept with adding keyframes is that you're gonna add your first keyframe and make the scale 100, and then you're gonna add another keyframe a little farther on and make that 200. So your pick is gonna come like closer. I see. How do you think you add a keyframe? Looking. There's only one button. <laughs> Next to scale. Is it right here? Or is it this little swirl? No, no, it's not swirl. I think it's the clock. <laughs> It's there! Look, so that's your keyframe. So how about you try adding another keyframe and make it 200? May I? Yeah. Drag it to the end of the clip, like the very end of the clip. Perfect. That doesn't look good, right? <laughs> now we have to do something called easy ease in. We gotta easy ease our keyframes and then we have to adjust our graph. Highlight your keyframes, both of them. You did really, really good job with that. Right click on one of them. Girl, you, you have the same computer. <laughs> do you have your right click on? <laughs> yeah, twin! I'm f***ing right clicking it. You have to press the two. That's not how my computer works. We have the same exact computer. Yeah, but you could do two click or one click and I do it one click. Go to keyframe assistant. Easy ease. Now your diamonds are hourglasses. Now we're gonna go to our graph editor. So you, do you know like where the graph editor may be? Do I right click on it? No. Here's a hint, it's next to- Right the here. Yes! Do you see that? Literal mathematics. So here's the thing with graphs, specifically for the zoom in, you want it to start like slowly zooming in and then when it gets to the end of the clip, you want it to go really fast. And then for your second clip, at the beginning of the clip, you want it to fast zoom in and then go slow. So like, the, it's like this. Like <laughs> Now you want to take each yellow knob and drag it all the way to the right. Yes. Perfect. Now take the other one, drag it to the right. That was, really good. Yeah. that was really good. This picture has to start zoomed out. So like I would say like a scale value of like 70 and then at the end of the clip you want to bring it back to 100. So you do you think you can do that by yourself? Yes, I need a question about that, love. Which one's the second one? The one that's, the one that's connected to me, look, look, that's the carrot. You heard it here first, she's so mean. 70? 
Oh, but do you notice that there's something missing? The background. Exactly. Okay, so go to this little search bar here and type in motion tile. Now drag that into your clip. Type to learn. Okay, now you see it shows up there, right? But not there. Because you have to do something. So you know where it says output width and height? Yes. I want you to increase those values. What you do there? So you're going to click on that little button where it says mirror edges. Yes. Girl, you did not just say can keep it. Now go back and do your second frame. Yeah. So I'm gonna meet back with you when we're doing the graph. I wanna see if you can do like this by yourself. So I'm just gonna sit here and not say a word. All right, we're gonna go back to 100. Yes. And it did the keyframe for me already? Yes, we have to easy ease it again because you, you want it to be hourglass. I know how to get to easy ease. Oh. With turn thing off! Two! <laughs> Beat you up. I'm so doing hard. it. Let's assess. Look. <sighs> do you remember where we went? <laughs> I'm gonna guess. Do I have to do it the other way? Yes! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I love being smart. You're really so smart. I mean. And now we gotta watch it though. That was good! So, should we do coming out of this picture a rotation or do you wanna do a shake? Shake. Am I scared? Yes. Yes, you should be. So hit P on your keyboard and it brings you right to whatever you want. A shake is basically, it starts like up here and then it goes down, up. It's like a bounce, you know? Like, look. So you wanna bring your time into care. I see, and everyone on my YouTube, they're like, she's such a good teacher. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm so stupid. You're stupid. You're yeah. stupid. Yeah. Stupid. Nicki Minaj, don't copyright me. <laughs> you want to add a keyframe for position and keep it at the original value. Okay, now bring your time indicator forward, and this is very important, one unit. Like that? Yes. You want to increase the second value, I believe? I said the second value. Like, increase it by like 200. Think I know math? Everyone's like, yes! Okay, now bring your time indicator forward a couple of units. More, 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 more. Couples, two. Now make the second value anything less than 540. So I would do like 300 or something. I'll do 200. 200? Okay. Is that that, that's a good, this is really intense, I'm not gonna lie. So I would do like maybe 400. White people smile, I'm <laughs> white people smile. Okay, a couple more frames. By a couple, I don't mean two, I mean like a couple more. Now make this a little bit greater than 540, but like barely. I'm just gonna do 541 just to be funny. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> now bring your time indicator to the end of the clip and then bring your value back to 540. Okay, like this might look bad even though I told you how to do it because like shakes are so taboo, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's not my fault. Here, let me just let me just take Wraith. Yeah, this was me. It was Oh no, hard. that looks better. Play it. It was just intense because of the value that you chose. Like the one that you told me to choose? I said make it greater than 540 and you were like, let me do like 10,000. You said add 200 more. You did. Call me on it. If I find said footage, I will play it. Like increase it by like 200. She said it. That's pretty good. Do you want to do some 3D? That sounds really hard. It's not hard. Right click on this clip. Oh, I forgot you can't right click. I did, no. I did it, I did it. Now click on pre-compose. So now it's that like- so hard. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's one big clip, right? Now hit S on your keyboard. Yeah. And like decrease it. Why did you make it so small? <laughs> and you can see like we composed it all into one new clip. Now we have to enable 3D on our clip. You see the cue box? Yes. And apply it, so apply that to your second clip. And now hit R on your keyboard and you have three different rotations. So you have your X rotation, your Y rotation, and your Z rotation, which is just like a normal 2D clockwise, X or Y flip. So I'm gonna guess that Y is like this. No. <laughs> Think of like X axis. That's what I was saying. Y is this is no, no, okay. Y flip, X flip. Do you want to do X flip, Y flip? Y. Increase it to like 70. You Ooh. see that? You see that? Ooh, is that? Do your little easy ease thing, girl. And I'm gonna show you how to do something else. Sometimes a girl forgets where the easy ease button is. Especially if this is her first time using. She's literally software. lying, it's not her first time. So we're we doing right or left. Right. When she can do math. <laughs> now I'm gonna show you a little like cute thing. So what if we, you know, went a little bit negative and then we went positive? You wanna take that little square and drag <laughs> it down. Just a little bit though. No, that is way too much. <laughs> now play it. I'm gonna leave this all up to you. You're going to do the Y flip for the next clip. I got this. Okay, I leave it at zero. Love. You want your second picture to start off flipped as well. Well, um, I'm gonna start at 70. I'm gonna start at 
170? She's not 170. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't actually have no idea what I'm saying. I think I'm gonna go with negative 70. Yeah, how did you even know that? So I crazy. just guess. But what should your second one be? Zero. Yes! Can I add a keyframe by clicking at that? Yeah, so okay, the first keyframe you want to add, you click the clock, and then for any other keyframe you want to add after that, you can just type in the value. Loves my religion and he- Oh! <gasps> Did you easy ease it? <gasps> now is it gonna go left or right? Left. Oh. No, you can't do that. You, yellow knob, not yellow square. Then now you moved to the position of your keyframe. <sighs> it's a frame too late, you can tell. It's so obvious. See, you have to have the editor eye for these things. That may have looked good to the average person. That was really good. <laughs> we want to add a light layer to give some definition to that 3D. Go up to layer, all the way to the top of the screen. I know where that is. Just give me a minute. Just, new. Slow. It's wild! <laughs> what? You said- layer, layer new. Oh, I didn't- I thought you said something about light. Yes, I did. Layer new light. But how was that? I thought- What does new mean though? Like, layer new- new layer. I'm going to add a new layer. That new layer is a light layer. No, I can't even blame you. I can't blame you. So y'all think I should start? <laughs> <laughs> so you want the light type to be parallel. I did that so flawlessly. Play it! Play it! That looks really good! So, I think that I should try and do a transition. <laughs> what are you saying? I think I should try and do a transition without any guidance from Lauren. Okay. So maybe I'm gonna try a rotation. No, I usually start off with a that's rotation. That's not 3D. I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna go R, because I know that's rotation. And then add a keyframe. Leave that at zero. I'm gonna go to the end. Is she nodding? I can't tell. I'm nodding, yeah, I'm nodding. And then I'm gonna go make another keyframe. Let me play around a bit and see if I can do like, oh, okay. By the look on Lauren's <laughs> face. No, it's just, it's, it's, it works, but it's just like very different from the settings that I would do. But you know, you know you. You know, maybe I'm not gonna do that. Maybe I'll do like a little 70. Keep that there. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm gonna get there. Okay, from here on out, I'm not saying anything. That's what she said last time. And then I'm gonna go here and put some easy ease on it so I don't forget. And then I'm gonna go to the next clip, put a keyframe on it. And then I'm gonna go to the middle of the clip, like around right here, and get me another keyframe on it. Don't say anything, Lauren. I'm not, look, look, my mouth is sealed. I'm experimenting. I'm gonna see what works and what doesn't. That doesn't look right. I'm just gonna put easy ease on it. <laughs> When in doubt, easy. Yeah. I'm neutral. I'm so indifferent to this. What happens if I do 70? See, that doesn't work either. I know this second one has to be zero to get it back to normal. It's not going to be 70. Maybe I'm going to try negative 70 based off what we did with the other one. I think Lauren wants me to put a motion tile on it. I'm going to search it. I'm going to drag it onto this clip. And then I'm going to click mirror edges. Oh, I remember. Tile height. That didn't work. Can I give you one hint? Yes, one hint. One hint. You have to increase the output width and height. Uh, and every leave everything else alone. Except for the mirror edges button. There we oh go. Oh my god, that was so hard. <laughs> I was like, Ugh. And now, I'm going to go into the graph. Since we're going into the transition, I'm going to go to the right. And then, on the other clip, I'm going to go to the left. Now, let's see what I did on my own. You did it! That's it! Alright, let's watch the edit in full. Alright. A beginner made this. That means you can too. Okay, so now we're gonna review our experience. So, what would you rate it? I would say a 6 or a 7. It's really difficult if you are going in with no guidance, but luckily I had Lauren sitting here with me to guide me along. But if I opened that for the first time, I would be clueless. I'm lucky to have Lauren. Y'all are lucky to have Lauren teaching you how to do this because I wouldn't know. Well, I already have a lot of respect for what Lauren does, but I have more respect now doing it myself because of how complicated and Aww. like smooth and good her edits look. I think they take a lot of time. That's a lot of time she's putting in, so I really appreciate that. As of right now, I do not think I will be starting my own <laughs> edit. Um, How would yeah. you rate my, like, my teaching skills, like, the aggressiveness included? I would say an 8 or a 9, just for the little moments of frustration. That's where the points the get. Fleeting the fleeting moments. Fleeting moments, yes. Lauren's a really good teacher, and she seems to be helping a lot of you guys. Yeah, yeah. I do seem to. So, thank, thank you guys so much for watching. Bye! Bye.